Child marriage is allowed in Malaysia. True, but let us put it into context for you. First, let's look at the laws. There are three different legal systems that govern marriage in Malaysia. Yes, three. Civil law, which is the country's primary secular law system, Sharia law, or Islamic religious law, which governs Muslims, and native law, which is a diverse set of customs that govern the country's indigenous peoples. In Sabah and Sarawak, these customs have been codified into written laws, which are enforced by native courts. Now, let's look at what each system says about marriage. Under civil law, the Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act 1976 says that the legal minimum age for marriage in Malaysia is 18, with parental consent. You get to marry without your parents' blessing only when you hit 21. For females who are below 18 but above 16, you can marry but only with added permission from the chief minister of the state. Also, this law does not cover Muslims and indigenous people who choose to marry under native laws. Muslim marriages are governed by Sharia laws, which specify the minimum age as 18 for males and 16 for females. But those younger than that can still get married, provided they get permission from the Sharia courts. There is no minimum age for this, as long as the Sharia court approves. Native laws in Malaysia do not specify a minimum age of marriage. Generally speaking, most customs require consent from the couple, the parents, as well as the blessing of the community leader. Complicated? Maybe. But these diverse legal systems actually reflect Malaysia's own diversity. After all, we're a Muslim-majority country with a significant indigenous population, strong migrant communities, and a British colonial past, along with countless other influences. In the matter of child marriages, however, there is much less diversity of opinion. A recent poll by UNICEF shows that 70% of Malaysians do not agree with child marriages. The poll had 1,240 respondents across 11 states, ranging from kids to adults. In addition to this, reports and studies globally have shown child marriages to be harmful. Studies show that girls who marry before 15 have a higher risk of dying during childbirth. The babies of teenage marriage are 60% more likely to die within the first year. Child brides have also been shown to face higher risks of domestic violence and sexual violence. Ultimately, as child brides are thrown into domestic responsibility, managing motherhood, and prematurely engaging in sexual relations, it spells an end to education, childhood, and major economic opportunities. And yet, a year 2000 census shows over 10,000 children between 10 to 14 listed as married. How do we come to have such numbers? Why do child marriages still happen? Globally, poverty and lack of education are closely correlated to the prevalence of child marriages. But correlation doesn't always mean causation. In the Malaysian context, the poverty rate has decreased over the decades, literacy rates continue to be high, but child marriage rates have held steady. Instead, a study by Sisters in Islam points to social and religious reasons as to why child marriages are still prevalent in Malaysia. Researchers found that child marriages are often seen as a solution to avoid the shame that comes with premarital sex and pregnancies out of wedlock. And this applies to child brides from different backgrounds, regardless of race or religion. Interviews with Sharia judges in this study show that they usually approve child marriages in cases of teen pregnancies and premarital sex. In 2014, a UN expert showed concern that authorities were encouraging underage marriage to avoid incidents of premarital sex and children born out of wedlock. Basically, children are being pressured into high-risk marriages to avoid shame. Now that's a real shame. These marriages continue to happen because the implementation of some of the laws are unclear. This study suggests that the Sharia court lacks a standard operating procedure. There are no clear guidelines on the approval process for child marriages throughout Malaysia. Out of 2,143 applications across seven states from 2012 to 2016, only 10 were declined. Now what we're doing is we're reliant on judges, on the Sharia court judges, to ascertain and determine whether or not it's okay for that person to get married. We know that more often than not, permission is granted. And from what we understand, the reason for it to be granted, well, it's insufficient for us, for civil society, and we don't think it's in the best interest of the child.
Most public discourse centers around Muslim child marriages, especially with cases like this. But government statistics show that child marriages among indigenous populations are equally common, but they happen in very different contexts. Sabah's Education and Innovation Assistant Minister observed that the conditions that lead to child marriage in Sabah have more to do with poverty than indigenous customs. In cases where the family is extremely poor, you know, deprived of uh, cash income in particular, some families will see marrying of the young children as a means of escaping that poverty. So it's not something that's done against the wishes of the, the child, but actually with the genuine intention to improve the livelihood of the, of, the, of the girl or the boy and the family. In an international context, the United Nations has recommended global standards on issues relating to child marriages. These recommendations center around placing the best interests of the child first in every decision and ensuring they have full legal rights as individuals. Invariably, this involves giving them options. If you don't have other options, if you're not going to school. Now, a lot of these girls who are getting married early are not going to school. They drop out of school at the age of 10 or 11. So what are they going to do? We start giving them options. So if children are not academically um, brilliant and they are finding it difficult in the formal school system, then what we need to do is set up more vocational school systems. We need to change the way we teach, localize it, make it more relevant to them and their life and their way of life. Because when people have options, then very rarely do they want to get married. Another result of our diversity? Context becomes even more important. We need to understand how and why these problems manifest in different communities. And that way, we can negotiate contextualized solutions.